To start, I was going to actually frame a little bit about the uh, Jacques and Jacques initiative, but uh, I don't know if uh, Zach talked about it a little bit. Basically, it's a website where you can go to to sign up. You take a short quiz, and it will give you a testing recommendation for how often you should be tested. And uh, you sign up with your email address to um, to get notifications every certain increment of time. Um, it also has really great uh, resources for clinics in town as well. Um, so. Um, I also was just recently, last weekend, at the uh, Canadian Conference for HIV AIDS Research presenting about Jack and Jock, a uh, poster presentation there, and it seemed like the really hot topic, which is maybe not a huge surprise, was digital online initiatives and how to reach people through uh, web applications such as Jack and Jock, um, taking the current, that current kind of digital landscape into account. Um, when making Moon Trail to promote uh, Jack and Jock, we were trying to reach out to youth through a similar online campaign in a way that we could could reach to them. Um, we're especially trying to resonate with younger um, MSM because they are uh, one of the highest risk groups, but also they're hard to reach because they don't necessarily come to community organizations and uh, for to access services. Um, so when making the film, our one of our primary objectives is that we wanted to make testing cool. We wanted we used to think that getting, going in and testing was the, the, a cool thing to do, basically. And um, so we're hoping um, that, that, that also because youth help set trends, that if we convince youth that it's cool, that that would have a larger ripple effect as well, so that everyone would think it's cool. Um, because, um, but also because gay men are often burnt out from constant messaging about sexual health because of being the high, one of the higher risk groups, there's a lot of messaging, and uh, we want to be innovative and avoid conventional approaches, so um, we, we kind of decided to work on this short film project, but. Um, I guess also um, it comes a bit from my work with Crooked that, that uh, um, Zach introduced before, but I feel like because uh, gay sex is often shamed and stigmatized and framed as dangerous even, that um, we need to we sort of recognize that gay men need platforms through which they can talk freely about sex, um, especially seeing as um, gay sex can also be approached rather superficially within the community through more commercial mainstream representations and stuff, so we were looking to have more of a candid, forthright discussion about that. Um, so I had some experience with my uh, magazine, Crooked, with getting people to share intimate... Hold on one second. My printer didn't work before I came here, so I'm trying to read this off a tablet, which I'm new to. Um, but yeah, my experience with getting people to share intimate confessions uh, my theory has always been that through sharing stories, it helps normalize queer experiences and that um, around sex, that these experiences aren't normally discussed openly. Um, however, I never worked on a documentary film before, and so I got um, Alex, I knew, had made really great, uh, more, um, I'm trying to look for the word that would not be documentary fiction, I guess, films? Okay, <laughs> yeah. Um, and he did, had a lot of uh, great music uh, video aesthetics that uh, I thought would really work. So, but one thing I was learning as I did the interviews for the uh, the uh, film was that uh, it was really hard to know what we were going to get uh, from people um, and how that was going to work. Um, there was no set script. We weren't sure who we were going to say. Um, but also I realized during, during the film that in the editing process, we really clearly needed people to say the topic of what they were talking about in each sentence. Otherwise, if we cut it off, there was no context. So getting people, we would have this great material about testing, um, and then, then we ha have to somehow frame it, which was an interesting kind of obstacle to work around. Um, but uh, we were also like trying to frame the topic of testing in more of a uh, documentary about gay life in Montreal in order to make the message more accessible it was kind of like if we thought if we got people introduced to the topic through through kind of a more broader subject that that we could make people more open to the message that we were um, trying to communicate in the end. However, um, I still feel like the transition into the theme of testing is a little awkward as it comes in at the end to some extent, and I think that kind of speaks to how it was a challenge for us to do the editing and bring testing in and maybe that people don't really talk about testing in everyday conversation and so that transition kind of mirrored a, a strange uh, segue that we were trying to make but it's a, not a segue that happens that often in everyday conversation actually um, so hopefully hopefully the film helps make that happen more um, I
Okay, so Alo the Film has screened at a few festivals, um, which we're really happy about. It's really great to watch it with you guys here today, too. Um, we uh, haven't actually shared it online, which was its original intention to really help, um, to hope, hope that it goes viral to some extent and that we can have people see it. So that was the main objective, and after tonight, it will actually finally be released online. We're going to try and share it around as much, so if you guys can help us with that in any way and help share it around, that would be great. Um, I made these little flyers that are at our uh, booth over there. If you want, you can pick some up. They have the web address for where you'll be able to watch the film. It's accmontreal.org slash moontrail, and if you want to pass those to friends, anyone who might be interested, that would be really great. Um, I'll get Zach uh, to introduce Alex here because he's going to talk about the film a bit more too. So thank you, George. Uh, so Alex Gregoire uh, was raised on the borders of Quebec and Ontario. Uh, he grew up in a Franglophone suburb where he liked to uh, take inspiration for his eerie and colorful shorts and music videos. He uh, studied photography in Ottawa and after uh, two years uh, hiatus battling Hodgkin's disease, he made his first professional short film with actress Anne-Marie Cadier and moved to Montreal. Uh, he got attention from producers with his short film Moodland and his first music video Plus Vite Que Ton, ton Corps for French singer Pierre Lapointe. He, uh, he then started his own production company, AY Films, and now produces and directs lo-fi 90s retro videos. Thanks. Thank you. Um, first, I'd like to thank uh, ACCM and you, Jordan, for giving me uh, the opportunity for uh, making this documentary, which is my first documentary ever. Um, and it was a bit of a challenge because I didn't know... Um, I was kind of scared of the subject first because it's, so, it's something so serious and I just wanted the message to be uh, really clear and that I wanted people to watch the film from uh, beginning to uh, the end. So that's why we went for uh, that kind of aesthetic, which is also uh, my signature. Um, so yeah, we wanted to uh, do something colorful and uh, and I was kind of afraid of this subject also because uh, I was diagnosed with cancer when I was 20 and since then, uh, since then, I was uh, kind of scared of uh, everything that was health related. So, but this really helped me um, getting to know the community, um, getting to know about a lot about testing, which I didn't know, and I learned a lot of things. And from the people we interviewed, I learned a lot of things too. So now I can you know talk about it openly and. Uh, tell my friend uh, to get tested because it's really, it's really, really important to you know protect yourself but also protect um, everyone else. And but you pretty much said uh, everything that <laughs> I wanted to say <laughs> about the film. Um, uh, do you have any idea? Of what else? Because, that's, that's fine. Are you happy with it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> this, is a, this is weird because this is the first film that has uh, that much success out of my uh, whole YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm really proud of that because uh, I think it represents Jordan and what our goal, but also uh, me as a director and what I want to do. And this is actually the, the best piece of work I've done so far that I'm proud and I'm glad people can watch it all over again. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks guys.